All right, so this is going to be a quick little video for the modular series. We're going to be doing a bent wall, uh, something like this, like a corner unit, right? So we're going to go ahead and get started with that in a new scene real quick. And just to give you an idea, something like that is super quick to block out. It takes like 30 minutes usually. But um, a wall unit, let's go ahead and do it with the default cube here. Let's just make a standard one, nothing too crazy. Place it like so. And we're going to bring it up. There, we're going to make it three meters tall. Uh, it's a three by two right now. Okay. It's a good idea to keep them on the one meter grid if possible. Uh, so if you were to make a three by three, that would work as well. But we'll make it a three by three. And so I'm going to move this out this way. You can see we're snapping um, incrementally, but we're going to go to the grid. We just want it to be like so, right, with the origin point at the bottom. Cool. All right, now we want to bend this thing around, but I want to show you something else. If we had the same kind of setup there as that other scene, and we did something like this, we extrude those out. Um, let's take this, bevel it, this, bevel it, let's do an inset, oh, not yet, let's do an inset, and let's go ahead and control E, bridge edge loops, grab this edge here, and then ring select it like that, ring selects at the selection, it press select up there at the top, you'll find ring selection in there somewhere. Uh, and uh, a K, yeah. Let's, I'm gonna grab all of that, inset, press O, outset. So I and then O, there you go. We'll just run those to the corners real quick, GG twice. Not gonna get too crazy here in this video anyways. All right, so this really needs to be in all quads. And this is, oh, let's add a little piece that comes out here, just so we know that it's there another one here inside okay we'll shade auto smooth too all right let's actually add some chamfers real quick just want to show you the shading what can happen on this with shading we'll do some chamfers no big deal shade auto smooth we're going to crank the values up here a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer you do want to do weighted normals with chamfers at minimum, in my opinion. You can see it's going to look something like that. I'm also going to tag keep sharp. Some things you can still keep sharp. It doesn't really matter. But for this, this is uh, ideal is to have at least a chamfer everywhere. And you might want to like cause it to bend a little bit. Okay. Let's see, you can do that number. That was a bevel, I guess. Right. So, let's duplicate it out and snap it over here to the grid. All right, so we're gonna bend this. The thing about bending is you actually need sometimes more geometry, so you can add some loop cuts. Uh, the rest of this should be okay. But when we bend this, uh, we're gonna do Shift S, cursor to selected, Press Shift A, create an empty at the origin. Okay, preferably. I'm using an add on uh, called Modifierless. So we're going to add apply a simple deform modifier, change it to bend, set it to Z. All right, now we can actually bend this thing. We want to go negative 90 in this case, like that. Uh, the problem is, is it's not on the grid. All right, so you need to reference that empty here when you create it. Uh, if you're using this add on, you could just click this little plus sign. It'll create an empty there for you. It's just kind of hidden, but it's in there. And so this is what's important. We need this to extend to where we want it, which is right there. And so I'm going to press G and Y with the empty selected. All right, so G and Y, and I can now move this around and do this number. Cool? Uh, because if we had another unit here, you do actually need this unit, by the way. You actually need to place it where it needs to go, rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, um, because this is what we want. We want it to be able to continue through. 
And so because we have enough supporting geometry, this works out fine. The window is becoming bent, just so you know. This is what's going to make it actually shade somewhat kind of correctly. Um, if you don't want the window bent, you're going to end up having to place like this geometry, rip it from here, duplicate it, P, separate it, place it over here in the center using cursors and uh, machine tools alignment, pi, and all that fun stuff. But you'll actually have to um, keep that curvature on this wall section. You'll have to make the window kind of pop out weird like. So actually, it's probably better to leave it bent. But at the same time, uh, usually when you bend things in this manner, a lot of times things become disproportionate. Like this is probably squished a little bit. All right. And so that can also be a little bit of a problem. Uh, but we're going to apply that simple to form real quick. Okay. With that out of the way, if that ever is an issue, a lot of times it's easier just to kind of fix it um, right here. So if I grab this edge, for example, click the plus sign. All right. We should get a new gizmo or a new transform orientation. You can see we got X now that works like that. And so I should be able to grab all the way through this, that whole window section. Um, and if I need to correct it a little bit, I can do that, but it's going to cause a little bit of weird shading. Uh, there's just no real way to avoid that. But sometimes your windows can be distorted pretty bad, so you need to just kind of go in there and correct them or whatever. That's how you're going to do that. Um, in this case, it actually looked like it got pretty good. Like it's not doesn't look too distorted. These ones look a little smaller, though. So maybe it is just a little bit small. But whatever the case, um, that's how you bend it. Once you apply it, you aren't done yet. You have to finish it uh, because you can see it's not a perfect alignment here. You can try to get it a lot closer than this, and that would be good. You do want to do that. You want to try to get it as close as possible. So zoom in really far. Uh, be careful with the alignment. I uh, don't have correct face attributes on for this. Just back it up. This actually distorts the UVs, but we're so close to this, it doesn't matter. And now we're able to reposition it back perfectly with this wall unit by using um, vertex snapping. So come up here, set it to vertex snapping. And if you hold hit G and hold control, you can snap every vertex, right? Which is nice. So it, other weird situations, right? You might not have all the same alignments of vertices. Uh, there's a little secret here about that. Normally you want to try to get them to snap to another vertex. But if these are very, very close, to the grid point here so you can see this is negative uh, 1.99992 or whatever so it should be negative 2 right and then this one should be negative um, well this one's going to be hard to tell um, but it's, it's technically okay I guess for the most part but it's going to be negative 1.8 something and so this could actually miss a line because I don't know if I made that wall out to the grid and in this case, I actually did. So it's negative um, 1.8 in this case. So it's, whoa, getting lost here. Negative 1.8 in this case, it was on the grid. So you can see like so. Uh, the z-axis isn't on the grid, so you wouldn't do that one. This is why vertex snapping is way better in my opinion. And uh, although you can't align them that way, I don't recommend it. It's a pain. All right, this is kind of an older technique that um, I almost forgot about. And I was reading an old uh, modular modeling tutorial, and someone had mentioned just skewing the um, the axis there, the origin point or the gizmo, whatever you want to call that thing, the empty. And um, that's something I used to do a very long time ago, and I just completely forgot about it. It's not as accurate, so warping's ac more accurate in my opinion. Um, when it comes to this, you don't have to snap these or realign them, but this is simpler and it's faster. So it's something you, you should definitely learn how to do and consider. Uh, let's talk about the floor real quick before we end this one. We're going to go back to grid snapping. I believe it or not, let's go ahead and just move this on the object mode. When you move in edit mode, it doesn't change the origin point. When you move in object mode, it does. Um, so if I bevel this vertex, control B, V, hit C, so that it clamps, mouse wheel up. Okay. Just something to keep in mind here. I'm going to merge all the vertices real quick and scale this out. Just pull it out like that. So I can grab this, press inset, and then uh, hit O to turn off that outset, and then B to turn it on boundary. Okay, this is why I do this number like this usually. Uh, sometimes you want like a pattern that goes along a wall or something. Uh, and you might also want to consider lining up the uh, vertices in this direction so that that pattern looks um, looks pretty good with it. And you don't have any maybe little holes or gaps in the 
in the wall or whatever the case may be because you it could happen you know um, in this situation though it's not really a big deal also you can always use the 3d cursor so if you were like place this here 3d cursor um, change the transfer the uh, pivot point here to 3d cursor so if you ever mess up on something like this you can scale in and out just so you know that's an option but these floor units and these walls should you know mostly work together that's what you're looking for anyways so i actually dissolve that one just this so we could do something like that maybe All right, shade auto smooth there we go go way to normal on it keep sharp um these ones i'm not going to make sharp i'm going to make chamfered okay so now we have something like that going on this section here i wasn't going to do floors in this video but we know how to bend walls now that's pretty good uh, i'm going to extrude this out snap it to the grid globally okay these are two meter sections so i'm going to do two meter here as well now you can actually separate this one see the origin point needs to go over here now right apply rotations and scales there we go um, this one has a little extra coming out with it so you would want to make these proper more official not not the way i'm doing it but if you just want to kind of see a demo here of how to set up floors this is basically it you can see i'm a little off on that one <laughs> whoops Let's try that again. Okay, and that's a little bit better. That origin point needs to be readjusted though. So you do have to be pretty precise with these things, right? Otherwise you get little gaps and stuff like that. Uh, so this is another thing I want to just point out. It's actually to deal with the wall, not just the floor. Uh, these wall units are two meter or three meters. These floor units are two meters. Generally speaking, it's not really a good idea. You should probably have three meter floor units as well. Um, however, you can use these together. I went over this in a previous video. Um, the trick about it, though, is that uh, you have to basically stagger them. So if you see here, we can make this just a little bit longer. So we have basically three units going in this direction at three meters. So this is. There are three meters, right? Or are they two meters? Not three. Yeah. I was like, I thought I did three. We're getting already. Losing my mind. All right. So, but see how that's working out? So if we want to do like maybe a big floor tile here in the middle, we could do that. Or we could do uh, three meter ones as well. So this is how you can start making some intricate kind of setups here. When it comes to the floors and stuff, you can just stagger them. I've always likened uh, modular kits to doing masonry work. If you look at how you can stack bricks and cut pieces to, to form walls, this is basically what's going on with the floor, right? So you can do this. It's not hard. Uh, do the same thing for the ceiling tiles or whatever. Um, add whatever you want to these. You can simply shoot them up and do whatever, right? Do whatever you want. Whatever works. Give the floor some depth, though. Don't make it so flat. And uh, it'll work out. Right? And that's pretty much what's going on uh, with a, that scene I started with. We'll go back to it real quick. And uh, make sure we're using EV here. Turn on the lighting. So you can see that same setup when you add, you know, a little catwalk version of that with a floor underneath it. Um, some little interesting floor tiles, some barrels, some props. Maybe put like a little lamp in the corner and do some roofing stuff. Or, or ceiling tiles. These ones are kind of broken up and all weird like, but it's meant to be like sheet metal and stuff. So you can make like a sheet metal piece and then just kind of rock it around. And sometimes that's good. That's a good reason why you might want um, caps on the top, right? Like it could be an important piece of a kit. 
to do that because you might have broken up damaged walls. So I'm not saying you have to always cull everything, but I am saying that if you have like a really clean environment that isn't damaged and stuff, you probably don't need those faces. Um, and if you have like a standard minimum for the wall depth, it's nice as well. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, if you want like the most robust use out of a wall unit, you can of course uh, leave it solid, right? For the most part, you can just make the backside a, um, a backstop of any type for the most part, just to block lighting and stuff like that as well. Um, so whatever the case, this is pretty much what's going on over here. It's the same setup we just did. Um, real simple, right? So with that in mind, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll check you guys out on the next one. All right, take care.